Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and happy new financial year. It is the 1st of July, 2021, new financial year and a new start. Uh, and probably for many of you, the aim for the new financial year is to get a job, to land a job. And that's what I'm going to hopefully help you doing today um, by particularly focusing on how we can best prepare and stand out at job interview. My name's James Whitcomb. I'm the candidate coach, and I look forward to spending the next 30 minutes with you this morning. Uh, for those of you watching on our candidate coaching platforms, you should be able to have the chat function there where you'll be able to interact and ask any questions. I'm gonna be sharing my screen with you today. Uh, we are, of course, coming to you via our YouTube channel. Uh, all righty, give me one moment while I share my screen. Okay, so interviewing in 2021, it has changed a little bit. Um, today, we'll particularly have a little bit of a session where we will focus on video interviewing uh, because video interviewing, particularly for those of you who are in lockdown at the moment, and that's Sydney, Brisbane, Perth, Melbourne are coming out of it, Adelaide might go into it. Northern Territory. You're all in lockdown uh, and for most of the last 18 months as recruiters, we've been mainly doing video interviewing. Uh, and video interviewing has been really effective for recruiters and for employers. Uh, so we think that this will continue um, even as we come out of COVID because it's allowed us as recruiters to do our job more effectively and efficiently uh, and, and it saves a lot of time. So we'll also talk today about you know, how you can best prepare for a video interview. Okay, just a little bit of workshop housekeeping before we kick things off. Um, if I drop out at any reason, please stay on the line uh, and wait for me to rejoin. I shouldn't drop out at all. We're broadcasting live via YouTube, but when you do one to 200 workshops a year, occasionally you have some technical problems. Um, I'd really encourage you to ask lots of questions in the chat function there. So if you've got a question about anything I'm talking about, it's likely somebody else has the same question, so feel free to type it in. I've got the chat screen stream on my screen as well, and I'll be able to answer that question. Uh, but take lots of notes as we're going along. Um, because we're broadcasting via YouTube, you will be able to watch a replay of today's workshop. But when you are learning a lesson, the first time you hear it is often when it's most powerful. And, and the way that you remember it when you first hear something is really, really important. So take some notes, note down those key things that stand out as we're going today. Hi, Zaina from Sydney. Thanks for joining us. We've got Bendigo, Melbourne. I think I saw a couple more from Sydney. We've got Essendon. We've got New Zealand. Hello across the ditch. Great to have you all with us today, and hopefully you get some key takeaways to improve your interview performance. All right, so an overview on what you are going to learn today. So we're going to break it down into three or four parts. The first part is before the interview. So what you actually need to do before the interview, and this is the most important part, because if you don't prepare really, really well before the interview, um, then it's really hard to perform well. So getting the basics right why preparation is the key. We're then going to talk about during the interview. So when you're actually in the room or when you're on the Zoom call, what do you need to do during that interview to really stand out? Um, how to impress in the room and what recruiters are looking for and some of the little things that you can do uh, to make a big difference along the way. Hello, Brisbane. Uh, we're then going to talk about post the interview. So a lot of people think, well, you know what, we've done the interview, it's done and dusted now. Um, but you need to continue presenting uh, yourself in the best possible light after the interview because it's still a very competitive process. Good morning to Sydney. Uh, okay, uh, and then finally at the end of the workshop today, I'll hang on the line and you can ask me any questions you like about interviews, but you can also ask me any questions that you like about anything at all to do with recruitment. So last week we ran a workshop on LinkedIn, the week prior cover letters, the week prior uh, resumes, um, I'm happy to take any questions that you have about finding a job. So who am I? Just to give you a bit of an introduction to my background and why I'm presenting today. Uh, I'm a director at Smart Recruitment. We recently won most outstanding medium agency in Australia. And I've been in recruitment for 15 years now. Uh, over that time, I've done a lot of interviews, as you'll see there, well over 3,000 one-on-one interviews and over 600 group assessments. And my focus has really been on recruiting roles where soft skills and interview behavior are key. 
So at Smart, we typically recruit a lot of customer service and sales roles uh, and roles where you need to perform well in the interview. And if you perform well in the interview, it can often paper over any cracks in your background or your resume. Uh, and we launched the Candidate Coach, the platform we're meeting on at the moment in December 2019. All righty, so let's get stuck into it. Interviewing skills, part one, what we need to do pre-interview. Now, pre-interview is really, really important. A lot of people actually think, well, I don't need to worry about the, the pre-interview part. Um, I need to worry about what I'm going to do when I get into the interview room. But you actually need to start off very, very early in the process preparing for interview. So there's one rule. I've got one rule for you that is going to help you to really stand out at interview. Preparation is the key. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, James, you sound like a boring old man. You sound like this man that I can see on the screen here. Well, I'm here to tell you that I probably do sound like a boring old man. I'm not quite a boring old man myself, as you can see, but pre preparation is absolutely key. You cannot hope to walk into an interview having not done any preparation and perform well. Probably only 1% of candidates can do that. So if you think you're in that top 1% that can just completely wing it, walk into a room and perform really well, good luck, all the best finding a job. But for most of us, we must do our preparation. So what do I mean when I say preparation? Uh, preparation is the key, but what I want you to actually consider is that you can actually embrace preparation. A lot of people think, oh, I can't be bothered preparing. But preparation you can do. Every single job seeker has the same opportunity when it comes to preparation. So I really want you to embrace preparation as, hey, I can do the preparation. I can do the preparation for interview and that's going to help me stand out. That's going to be my biggest point of difference uh, when it comes to the job interview. All righty. So, oops, I've clicked on the wrong screen there. Situation. You've just landed a interview. Absolutely fantastic. I'd like you to answer this question in the chat box. How do you feel? How do you feel when you have just landed a job interview? You're still on the phone. The person has said, hi, hi, Tom. Thanks very much for speaking to me today. Look, I'd like to invite you in for an interview. I'd like for you to come into our office. I'd like you to um, you know come and meet with us so that we can have a formal job interview. How are you feeling? Please type that into the chat function there. Um, you know what emotions are going through because for everybody it's going to be different. Everybody's going to feel a little bit different. Excited and happy and keen, nervous, excited and anxious, excited and nervous. So this is normally what we experience are these two emotions nerves and excitement. Excitement because we've worked quite hard. Yes, I've been working so hard on my resume, my cover letter, my job applications. I finally landed an interview, but then all of a sudden, oh my goodness, I've got a job interview. So the nerves start to take over. That is completely fine. A bit nervous and a bit happy. All right. Another question for you is, you're still on the phone. Let's just say I'm the recruiter and you're, you're the candidate. What questions do you think you should ask me before you hang up the phone? Have you ever actually asked a question before hanging up the phone? Type into the chat again there, what are the questions that you think you should be asking before you get off the phone uh, when you have been advised that you're coming into an interview? Because there's plenty that I'm going to go through. I would love to hear your thoughts first. All right, so some of the questions, and these questions need to be asked before hanging up the phone because normally what happens is someone says, hey, I'd like to bring you in for an interview. And you think, fantastic, when is it? Great, you hang up the phone, hey, I got a job interview, it's fantastic. And you think, oh, there's a lot of things that I don't know. So are you able to send through a full job description on the roll? That's a wonderful question to ask, absolutely. Another one through the chat there. Is there anything I need to bring with me to the interview? Fantastic. That is a really important question. Two of you have mentioned that. We need to know. What should we bring along to a job interview? All right. So let me take you through what I think you need to ask. Again, job description coming up in the chat. First of all, who am I meeting with? You need to know. 
who am I meeting with in the job interview? Because there's lots of different options here. You need to understand that person and what they do. Are you meeting with the recruiter? Are you meeting with the CEO of the company? Because it's probably going to be quite a different interview there. Or are you meeting with the manager that you're going to be reporting into? You need to know who it is that you are meeting with so that you can be prepared. I'd really encourage you to look them up on LinkedIn. Look them up on LinkedIn and get an understanding of who they are, where they sit in the company. You might even be able to use this information. You might say, hey, I'm meeting with the manager. I looked them up on LinkedIn. That Maybe they've recently shared an article or they've written something themselves. You can get to understand a bit about their passion and you can let them know. I love it when a candidate meets me for an interview and they says, hey, James, I saw your LinkedIn profile and I read your article on resume creation. That carries some weight. That impresses me as a recruiter that you as a candidate have done that level of research. Another good one through the chat function there. Is it a group interview and how many people? Absolutely. You want to know that. You want to know what am I walking into? Um, what should I expect? That's a really good, broad question. What should I expect? If someone says to me, hey, what should I expect at interview? They're going to get a really good answer from me. They're going to get some really good insight. As we've had a, one of our friends say in the chat, is it a group or an individual interview? You need to know. You need to understand what is going to happen so that you can prepare for it. What type of questions will be asked? There are lots of different questions that can be asked, but if you know what questions you're gonna be asked, you can go away and you can practice. And that will give you a great opportunity to be better prepared for the interview. What attire should I wear? Particularly in 2021, attire for interviews continues to progress, continues to progress. If you are going for a law, position, you're going for a, a, a position as a lawyer, you would wear probably a full suit, shirt and tie. If you're going for a marketing consultant role at a design agency, you would probably dress differently. Some The hardest part of it for a lot of you though is you don't actually know what is what, what should you be wearing at the interview. So the best way to find out is just to simply ask. What's car parking like? You know, you want to understand how to get there with plenty of time. That is really important. Um, how long would the interview take? Again, sometimes it can be a 20 minute one-on-one -on -one, or it can be a two hour group assessment. Also, you don't wanna finish a 20 minute interview and think, oh, that was only 20 minutes. I did really, really poorly. Whereas if you'd asked beforehand and the recruiter had said, look, the interview will only go for 20 minutes, then you think, oh, okay, that was what I was expecting. So you need to understand what you should wear, how you're gonna get there and how long would the interview take? Um, what do I need to bring along with me? So someone in the chat mentioned this. What do I need to bring along? As recruiters, we love well-organized candidates. Not bringing the correct information to interview can actually ref reflect poorly on you. So even if the recruiter's forgotten to tell you what to bring, it probably doesn't reflect well on you, and it sounds really, really unfair, but that is what happens. And the most important question, I've put it in red, because if you can ask this question, this gives you the absolute gold. What can I really do to impress at interview? I can't tell you what the answer is going to be here because it's going to be different each time. But for example, the recruiter might say, well, you're, you're meeting the CEO and the CEO doesn't ask a lot of questions about your technical skills. The CEO loves to hear about um, your values and your motivations. So straight away, if that was going to be your interview, you know that that's what you need to focus on with the CEO. Well, the recruiter might say, hey, look, you're meeting Tom. Tom is a really time poor person. He only meets candidates for 15 minutes. He wants to get straight to the point in learning about your technical software skills. So you, if you're meeting with Tom, you know, you know, not, to, not too much fluff, a little bit of rapport building, but make sure you focus on talking about your technical skills. This is a key question for you to ask. All right, so I'm gonna pop all the questions up on the screen now. Take a screenshot of that. Take a photo of that. Hopefully you've been writing these down as we're going along, but if you haven't, now is your opportunity uh, because before we hang up the phone, if you can ask, you don't necessarily, if you can't ask all these questions, there are a lot of questions I know, but ask the key ones here. Ask the key ones here because what that actually does is that will help you better prepare and it will also help to reduce your nerves. Nerves come from the fear of the unknown and the fear of the unknown with interviews is a lot of things. Who am I meeting with? What's going to happen? What are they going to ask me? What are they going to be like? How long should I be there for? How do I best prepare? 
Start to remove those elements of fear. You'll become better prepared and you will perform better. So that is what we need to do uh, before we go along to interview or get off the phone. All right, so let's say we've gone through that. We have answered all the questions. We've got an interview tomorrow. Let's pretend our interview is Friday at 10 a.m. It's on tomorrow morning. How do we best prepare for the interview? Because, again, we need to be doing a lot of work the day before, not the day of, not the day of. Even if your interview is at 5 o'clock tomorrow, it's really important to do a lot of preparation the day before, partly because when you go to bed at night, the day before a job interview, if you are not fully prepared, you are going to lie in bed staring at the ceiling and thinking, okay, I've got to do this in the morning and this and this and this. You won't sleep well. So we need to get prepared the day before. So what does that mean? Here's all the things we need to do the day before. Check and confirm how we're going to get there. What train are we going to catch? What's parking going to be like? Make sure our clothes are cleaned and ironed. Don't jump up in the morning and think, I'm going to grab out my white shirt and you find out your white shirt's got a stain on it. And then you think, oh, my goodness, my interview's in an hour. I haven't got another shirt. Get organised the day before. Shoes are polished. Clean, neat shoes are a great first impression. If you've been asked to bring along any documents, make sure they're printed out the day before. Why the day before? Because, again, if you wake up in the morning, you don't have ink in your printer or you can't access printing, you need to know the day before so you can get sorted, not the morning of the interview. If you've been asked to do any assessments, if you've been sent a test, do it before the interview and practice the answers to your interview questions. So basically you want to be going to bed having done everything on this list here. That is going to help you feel calm. That is going to help you feel organised. That's going to give you some confidence that up until this point in time, hey, I've done everything that I can to best prepare. Okay, the morning of the interview, we wake up, the alarm goes off. <clears throat> you probably haven't slept very well, but hopefully you've got enough sleep that you can get through the day. So first of all, have breakfast. This sounds small, but this is a really important point. You need to have a full stomach. I like to do my interviews in the morning. That's when I concentrate really well. What I've, often, what I've noticed, though, is we interview in very small rooms. They're one-on-one -on -one interview rooms. You sit across the table from someone. If somebody hasn't had breakfast, it, they normally have bad breath. And it sounds a little bit laughable, but it happens all the time. And when you have to sit in a room with someone for 30 minutes who's talking to you has, has bad breath, it creates a really bad impression. And for me, it's hard for me to get over that fact with a candidate that I was a, an unpleasant experience spending time with them. So even if you wake up and you've got butterflies in your stomach and you don't want to have anything, have breakfast. It's also good for your blood sugar levels, which also helps your concentration. Some of the basics, neat and clean, shower and shaving. Avoid strong odours. If you're a smoker, try not to smoke before your interview unless it really makes you shaky. Give yourself plenty of time. Take things in case the weather turns bad. Um, and array, array, uh, arrive at the location of the interview at least 30 minutes before. So if you're coming to a building for an interview with me, get downstairs 30 minutes before, but don't come up until 5 to 10 minutes before. So you want to be there 30 to 40 minutes before because that allows for a delay, but you don't want to present at reception that early because that kind of shows a bit of poor judgment. So five to 10 minutes before, announce yourself at reception. All right, take to the interview. So what do we actually need to take along with us? Well, the first thing is a compendium, and I put a photo of a compendium on the screen there. This is a black compendium. You can get one from Officeworks or from a news agency for about $20 or $25. Uh, and in the compendium, you can take with you all the things that are listed below. Turning up with a compendium to a job interview gives a really professional uh, sense. I love it when a candidate arrives, I've got a compendium, and in it you should have a copy of your resume and cover letter. Now you might, James, why do I need to take my resume? They've already got it. Well, what if someone comes and joins the interview halfway through? Someone might be walking past, jumps in the interview with you. They don't have your resume. You can simply hand it over to them. Say, hey, here's my resume. It helps you to look professional. A copy of your elevator pitch. If you're not sure what the elevator pitch is, um, jump onto the Candidate Coach uh, videos on the video page. We've got video number three, I think it is, which is called How to Give an Amazing Answer to the Most Common Interview Question, which is how to write an elevator pitch. Have an elevator pitch there. The most important thing in your compendium, though, is the next one. Five or six prepared questions. 
So you need to have done your research into the company. You need to have done your research into the job and written down five or six questions to ask. Because at the end of nearly every single interview, the recruiter is going to ask you, do you have any questions at all for me? And this is a wonderful and unique opportunity for you to really impress by asking good questions. Right, you wouldn't ask six questions, but you should write six down because a couple of them might get answered throughout the interview anyway. And then the other thing you should have there is a copy of the ad, any ID, payroll information, any certificates and anything else. But take it all along in a compendium. Present yourself as a professional candidate. So preparation is the key. Preparation is your friend and preparation you can do. So all the things that I've just gone through on the day of or the day before the interview, you should be able to do them. There's absolutely no reason why you can't go through and do the things that I've just asked you. What we actually find though, is that a lot of candidates, they do try to wing it. And when it comes to being the successful candidate for a job, the successful candidate is not always the most qualified and experienced. The successful candidate is usually the best prepared and present themselves well throughout the recruitment process. So hopefully everything that I have asked you there, and my question for you is, I'd love to hear you write in the chat function, can you do this preparation? What I've just asked you then, do you think at home before your next interview, you can do those things? Type your answer in the chat box for me. I would love to hear whether you think what I'm asking you to do is reasonable, or maybe you think it's too much hard work. James, that's just too much hard work. If you think it's too much hard work, the bad news for you is that what I've just shown you is what the best prepared candidates do. So you are competing against candidates who have done what I've just put on the screen there now. Okay, got a couple coming through. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, so it's wonderful to hear that many of you think that you can do everything that I've shown you there. All righty, let's move on to part two. Okay, so we've answered the questions on the phone. We've put a lot of time and effort into preparing for the interview. How do we now stand out during the interview? This is often the trickiest part because, again, the preparation steps I've taken you through um, is something that everybody can do. Just a question that's come through. How important is to be well prepared in a group interview? That is a really good question. It is just as important to be as well prepared. Prepared in, a, in a group interview. There's nothing that I put on the screen there that I wouldn't do um, because most group interviews as well still have a one-on-one -on -one component. And with a lot of the preparation that you're doing, you're, you're not necessarily going to be pulling on all of the things, but you need to be well prepared so that you can draw on your preparation when the timing is right. So I would still do all of what I've shown you today, whether it was an individual or a group interview. Great comment in the chat. It is very important to be prepared for any interview to show the best version of yourself to a future employer. So yes, definitely. That is a great statement. And that is what it's all about. You want to show the very best version of yourself at interview. You don't want to turn up at interview uh, and be anything less than the best version of yourself. You're advertising yourself. All righty, during the interview, let's get into the interview room now. I want to share this quote with you. I absolutely love this quote from Maya Angelo. If I keep looking over there, that's because it's my display screen. I want to read it to you. I've learned that people will forget what you said, but people will forget what you did. And sorry, people forget what you did, but people will never forget how you make them feel. How you make them feel. So you as a candidate are going to make the interviewer feel a certain way. Now, this is not common talk when we are talking about going for a job interview, how you make somebody feel. But we are all humans. We all have conscious and subconscious bias. We all have conscious and subconscious feelings. So if I leave the interview with a candidate and they were pretty negative and, look, they had a really good experience but, you know, they were hard to chat to and they didn't really engage, I can't really help but feel not that interested in them. Whereas if I've met a candidate who was enthusiastic, who made good conversation, who smiled and looked me in the eye, it makes me feel better. 
It makes me feel better about the whole experience. And that's probably going to be my overall lasting impression is I'm going to remember how that candidate made me feel. So a key message for you is how can you make the other person that you're meeting feel good about you? I want to go through with you some tips. All right, 11 tips for making people. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly because there are 11. I'm making people around you feel comfortable and you can see the link there. It might be a bit hard to read because it's in blue. So 11 tips you can do. This is not an article written for recruitment, but you can apply it to an interview setting. So first of all, smile. When you meet with someone, don't you like it when they smile at you? So you need to start off by doing the smiling. It's a firm handshake when you meet the person. It's looking them in the eye and a smile. Thanks very much for meeting with me today. I'm really looking forward to the interview. Even if on the inside you're like, I'm not looking forward to the interview, you know, get your smile on, present yourself as happy. Be confident. So firm handshake, as I said, looking someone in the eye is confident. When you're sitting at the interview table, have good posture. Don't be slouched over. Um, you know, don't, don't lean back too far in your chair. Um, you know, sit upright, look engaged and give a sense of confidence. Don't be arrogant, but give a sense of confidence. Give out the compliments to the person you're meeting. Hey, James, that's a lovely salmon blazer that you're wearing. Where did you get that from? You know, say something along those lines. Hey, James, I looked up your LinkedIn profile. Wow, you've worked here for 15 years. That's amazing. People love receiving compliments. So if you can give a compliment in the interview, it works really well. Slow things down. One of the biggest mistakes a lot of candidates make is that they rush in the interview. You've made it once you're in the interview room. You have got there. I have never had a candidate miss out on a job because they spoke a bit slowly or they took too long, but I often get feedback that the candidate really rushed through things. They gave really short, sharp answers. And we know that as, as recruiters, you are nervous and that's why you're rushing. So just take the time to slow things down. You know, there's no time limit on how quickly you need to get through answering questions. Have open body language. So how I'm sitting now, I've got nice square shoulders. My hands are open. I'm talking openly. I talk a lot with my hands, as, you, as, you've, no, as, a, as you've noticed. You don't need to talk a lot with your hands, but don't, don't sort of cross your arms. You know, you're probably noticing now that I look a lot more defensive um, and those types of things. Have open body language. Show that you're actually listening. So nod when the person's talking to you. Say, so, mm, make some noises. Give an indication that you're actually listening to them. Use the mirroring technique. The mirroring technique, and you might want to Google this, it's hard to go through today, is kind of mimicking or speaking in a similar way or maybe repeating the question back to the recruiter. But people like being spoken to in a way that they speak themselves. Uh, make the interviewer feel at home. So you might be thinking, ah, oh, I'm, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous. And a lot of candidates do that. You think, I'm so nervous, and you only focus on yourself. The person you're meeting might only interview one or two people every year. They may feel very nervous as well. So if you can help to create an environment of comfort, and a lot of that is through building rapport, it's going to be great for everyone. Nothing wrong with having a laugh. Nothing wrong at all. In fact, I would encourage you to have a little bit of a laugh, smile. If something funny comes up in your past or a funny situation at work, nothing wrong with smiling and having a laugh. Being really, really honest is absolutely key. Um, you know, recruiters want to know that they're dealing with somebody who is being honest. Uh, and being nice, you know, just at the end of the interview. Oh, James, really want to thank you for giving me 30 minutes of your time today. It was great meeting with you. You know, just a nice little thing to finish things off. So, whoops, I'll bring back up that slide again. So these are all things. Again, they've got absolutely nothing to do with your skills, your experience, your background, your suitability for the role. But if you can do these things, guess what? You are increasing your chances of getting the job. So, again, nothing we've talked about today is about your skills and experience, but everything we're talking about today improves your chances of performing well at interview. Someone in the chat, I find a laugh at interview works. Absolutely, it certainly works. There's a saying that the shortest distance between two points is humour. Okay, so what else do we need to do but to stand out in the interview room? So we need to impress with our knowledge of the organisation. So if you're coming along to meet an organisation for interview, you need to show them what you know about them. Organisations absolutely love 
And it doesn't matter whether this is a government, a non-for-profit, a corporate organisation, whoever it is, organisations love candidates that show they know what the organisation does and stands for. So go and do your research there. Look into their values and beliefs, but even more importantly, look into you know, their market. So where do we do this? We Google. We can go to the company website. Fantastic. We can go to the careers page. Fantastic. That's the absolute basics you must do. But I would encourage you to do more than that, particularly if they're a large organisation. You know, find out some information about some of their projects, what they've been working on, company announcements, news from the press, publications they've released. Go to that deeper level by doing more research and then use that in your interview. You can use that in your interview through the questions you ask or through the answers that you give. Show that you've done a lot of research and you have a good knowledge of the organisation. So in the chat, someone's written, trying to relate to them, to feel at ease and comfortable, having a joke, a laugh whilst being professional still. That is exactly what it's all about. You've encapsulated it really, really well there. It's professional, comfortable, and an opportunity to have a laugh. So impressed with your knowledge of the organisation. If you can show more than any other candidate that you know a lot about the organisation, that will carry a lot of weight. That will carry a lot of weight. Impressed with your knowledge of the position. So someone in the chat mentioned earlier, asking for a job description on the phone. Absolutely. You want to be able to have, um, you know, get a copy of that if you can. But you also want to show in the interview that you understand what do, knowing, you know, so you understand what doing a good job looks like. So for example, if you're going for a sales role with an organisation, giving some indication of what a good sales person does. Um, you know, it's re your, your results driven, giving in, a, you know, giving an answer that you show the importance um, that, you know, that doing a good job in sales means exceeding your sales quota. Um, show in the interview, because we don't want to recruit someone just to do the job. We're looking to recruit someone who's going to do the job well. So if you can show an interview, you understand what doing the job well means, then that's going to impress Link your experience and your education back to the position. So don't just talk about, you know, a lot of candidates say, here's what I've done, and it's in a silo over here, but then here's the job over here in another silo. You want to link the two together. This is what I did in this particular role with my previous company, and this is how I could do it with your company. So we're bringing the two together. Um, understanding the impact that the position has. And then thirdly, impressing with what you will bring to the team. Now, most of the time when someone is interviewing you, they are actually consciously or subconsciously thinking, do I want to work with this person? What's this person going to be like to work with? Do I want to sit next to this person for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, for 48 weeks of the year? This person may be thinking, this person is going to sit right next to me. So you need to show what you're going to bring to the organisation in terms of your whole self. You are a potential colleague of the people you are meeting. Make them want to work with you. So again, we come back to showing your personality, having a laugh, having a smile. Hello to the person who's just joined us from Murbeen, small country town in northwestern Victoria. Great to have you with us. Alrighty, but James, what's with all the research? Why are you asking me to do so much research? It sounds like I need, you know, to go away and and then really delve into the company and the role. And that's going to take a lot of time. I'm a busy person. Why do I have to do it? Well, I want to share a quote with you. And I'm going to pop it up on the screen now. And this quote comes from um, Stefan Wielak, who's a well-known recruiter in Melbourne. You can check him out on LinkedIn. This is something he posted on LinkedIn about six months ago. And I'm going to read it out to you. Credentials on your resume will get you that first interview, but it's not the key to your next position. Looking at the people we recently hired or who will be joining us shortly, there is one thing they all have in common. They were uber prepared. They have dug deep into what we do and stand for. They impressed us with their understanding of our business and the problems we are trying to solve. Yet not all of them were exactly what we were looking for. On the opposite side, I interviewed a candidate the other day who looked great on paper, but when I spoke with her, she had no idea what we were doing and said she'd only research a company once she lands an on-site interview. Well, it's a Zoom interview these days. Though if you haven't spent any time researching our company, you're missing the mark. Now, this is the key paragraph. I understand doing research takes effort and you don't even know if it'll pay off. 
However, that's exactly what other applicants do to get the job. And they're the ones you compete with right from the beginning of your application. So if you're sitting there thinking, James, gee, what you're asking me is actually a high level. Well, guess what? You are competing against candidates who are doing this research. And if you don't believe me, you can hear it directly from Stefan, who is an employer. Okay. Now, let's move on a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about answering the most common interview questions. Because a candidate who answers questions confidently gives the interviewer a great sense that they are a top performer. So if I ask somebody a question interview and they say, oh, um, you know, this, and then there's, they're unsure about the answer, to me it gives the impression that they don't know the answer because they don't know how to do the job well. So an interview you need to try as best as you can to give confident answers. Okay, now I'm going to share with you um, we're just quickly going to go through probably the 10 most common interview questions. You can download this article um, on your candidate coach platform where you're watching this. Um, you can go and download interview questions that are practice ones. Um, there's heaps of resources available online. Uh, just going to jump in. We've had a question in the chat function there. If you do the research and you're still unsuccessful, it may help you in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Particularly with industry research. So, if you're doing all the research and you're not getting the job, you I don't want you to think that you've wasted your time. You've actually increased your chances of getting that job. Um, and hopefully that research has helped your own overall market knowledge. And as you go along and you do research for one job and you may be unsuccessful, second job may be unsuccessful, the time to do the research you will learn uh, becomes less and less. You will become quicker at finding out the key parts of the information. Because to find out some key information, it doesn't need to take hours. You can do it in 10 minutes if you know how to do it well. All right, what are the most common interview questions and how do we go about answering? Question number one, what can you tell me about yourself? Well, I'm gonna tell you to go back and check out how to create an elevator pitch because this is the most common interview question. What can you tell me about yourself? Uh, and I start all of my interviews with it. It might not always be in those exact words. It might be, tell me a little bit about yourself to begin with but go away and make sure you have got a really strong elevator pitch to this question. Question two, can you list your strengths? Now, this again is a really common question. My advice to you is avoid saying things like team player, hard worker, good communicator, because they are not quantifiable. Anybody can say that and anybody can mean it. If you're going to list three strengths, I would say at least two of them need to be technical strengths relevant to your job that you're applying for. So if I ask an accountant, can you tell me, can you tell me what your strengths are? I would love for that accountant to say, well, my biggest strength is that over the last three years, um, I've studied the latest versions of MYOB software um, with each new release, uh, and that has really helped me to stay on top of the market in terms of the latest accounting trends. Um, and I've been able to apply that to my work. So that's a very technical answer. If the accountant says, oh, look, I'm a really good team player, it's kind of like anybody can say that it doesn't carry a, a lot of weight. So at least if you're going to give three strengths, two of them must be technical to do with that role. One of them can be a soft skill. So as the answer has here from the article, an exhaustive list of adjectives such as capable, hardworking, diligent, won't really portray you well because anyone can make these claims about themselves. So if you're going for a sales job and I say, can you tell me about your strengths? I love it when a salesperson says, you know, for the last 12 months, I've only missed my target once. I was really disappointed when I missed it. But those other 11 months, I worked so hard and didn't stop working until I had got well past my target. I'm a hardworking, target oriented individual and I've got the results to show it. Have something there that's tangible and quantifiable. What weaknesses do you have? Ooh, a lot of people are scared of this question. If you can answer this question, type into the chat function now, what would you actually say in an interview if you are asked today, what weaknesses do you have? How would you answer this question? Have you got a really good answer down padded for this question? 
I actually think that in 2021 is probably the best time to be asked this question. When I started in recruitment in 2005, when people answered this question, we would always, you know, oh, these are their weaknesses. This is what they said they're not good at. It would carry a lot of weight. But in 2021, it's actually a really um, question of self-awareness. And you can actually say, um, you know, these are the areas that I would like to perform stronger in. So you're kind of turning it into a positive. So again, you, you know, coming back to the accounting example, if I ask an accountant, what weaknesses do you have? You know, the accountant might say, oh, look, well, as I said, I'm really good with MYOB accounting software. I've, I've really focused my learning on, on that. But um, Zero is a software program where I've not spent as much time. Um, you know, that's a real learning opportunity for me. So instead of saying, I've just got a weakness, you're answering it in terms of this is a learning opportunity for me. This is something that I've, I'm conscious of, I've recognised I could be stronger on. So turn that weakness answer into something that is said here needs to be improved. And again, you can go and read this whole article um, via the link that's in on the left-hand side there. Um, but you need to have a practised answer for this. You need to know with all the questions what your answers are going to be, but the weakness one, people don't like it and so they avoid practising it. Um, go away and practise it. Why should I consider hiring you? Oh, again, this is a tough question. Okay. What I want you to do here, if you get asked this question, is I want you to look the person right in the eye the whole time you are answering it. And I want you to tell them, I want you to tell them what it is going to mean. I want you to speak from the heart. I want you to tug on those heartstrings. I want you to tug on the heartstrings of the recruiter and think, oh, I really want to give this person the job. So if I was a candidate and someone said, James, why should we consider hiring you for this position? And to be honest, this question normally comes up towards the end of the interview. I, I would take a moment, I would take a breath, and I'd look them in the eye and say, having this position would mean so much to me. I've worked my whole career to be in this room today to be interviewed for this position. This position with your organisation um, is a huge step in responsibility for me. I want you to know if you give me this opportunity, I will work harder than any other candidate. I will apply myself better than any other candidate. And not for one minute will you regret giving me this opportunity. Not only does it mean a lot for me, but it also means a lot for my family. And as I've told you, my motivation is providing a good life for my family. So I might not be the best candidate, and if I don't get the job, I'll still respect you. But if you give me this opportunity, you will not regret it. Powerful answer there. Powerful answer. Hey, you might not be able to give an answer as good as that yet. I've been practicing that for years, but that is what you can deliver. Let the person know. Often we are scared in interviews to show some emotion and to show what it would mean to get the job. Here, you can show some emotion. You can show what it would mean. Speak from the heart. Um, you know, I had a candidate the other day that said, I'm the first person that in my family that's graduated from university in 25 years. And so to land a graduate job would just be a huge moment. The candidate, that, that actually carried a lot of weight. That carried a lot of weight. All right, I'm going to jump into the chat because we've had a few questions or comments come through uh, around weaknesses. My weakness is I don't like to get everything, and I don't like to do everything alone. I like to get feedback and learn how others feel. That is a good weakness. You could wrap that up into a nice answer. Someone else is in public speaking. Get nervous. I'm working on it, but I volunteered to do short presentation in staff meetings to overcome my fear. Fantastic. So what both of you have done there is you said, this is where I'm feeling weak, uh, but you've also said this is where I am, you know, working to improve it. Uh, maintaining eye contact shows you're confident in yourself. Absolutely. Um, so some great questions and comments coming through. All right, why should I consider hiring you? We've answered that. Let's move on to the next one. All right, where do you see yourself in five years from now? So this question, I would say, link it back to, um, you know, the organisation. I'd say, look, to be honest, my uh, long-term view isn't that important at the moment. I'm just really focusing on getting this job. But in five years' time, I would love to have thought that I've worked really hard in this position that's not available at the moment. Uh, and then through my hard work and results, I've continued um, to be promoted up the line. Uh, 
why do you want to work here? So again, this is coming back to the level of research. If you've done your research into the organization uh, and you've done your research into the position, um, then that's really important. Uh, what is your salary expectation? This is a tricky one. Pop in the chat box function. Are you comfortable? Do you know what your salary expectation is? This is probably even for very confident people talking about salary, talking about money in front of you know somebody you don't really know is something that most people find confronting uh, and most people just don't feel comfortable with. So you need to have two salaries in your mind. You need to have two salaries. You need to have the salary you'd really like. We call it your dream salary. And then you need to have the salary that you'll settle for if everything else is really, really good. So let's say you're going for an administration job and your dream salary is 60,000, but if everything else lines up, you'd be happy with 50,000. So you want 60, for this job, you'd be happy with 50. So I would say to them, in, ter in terms of salary, I'd love to hear from you what this role is offering. Um, you know, ultimately I am seeking 60,000. That's my dream salary for a, a position like this. But I would certainly entertain offers less than 60,000 if everything else uh, was lined up. So what you'll notice there is I didn't say 50,000. I didn't say 50 because if you say a low figure, that will probably be the offer. I've said I'd like 60, I'd consider less than 60. So they might go, oh, we really, really like this person. Let's offer them 55. You would have taken the job at 50, but you've now been offered 55. So tell them what you really want, but also tell them that you're flexible. You can always ask. So in the chat, how do I know what they are offering? You can ask, what is the salary for this position? I wouldn't ask it in the first five minutes of the interview. I would ask it towards the end. Maybe, you know, if you in the have you got any questions for me, if it hasn't come up, you know, what is the salary package for this particular role? Okay. What motivates you? So this is personal. If you could ask what's your motivation, I would, um, you know, it's going to be different for every person, but I would at least try to have one work motivation and I'd also try to have one motivation outside of work. Um, what makes you a good team player? So you need to have some examples here. You need to have some examples of when you've worked in a team, um, but not just to say, hey, I worked in a team and we had a good result. Have an example of a time where you worked in a team, but talk about what your role was, talk about what other people's role was, um, and what the outcome was. What we want to see in this answer is an example that somebody understands and can demonstrate their role within a team, not just give a throwaway answer. Uh, and finally, Ed, and we've talked about this, is there anything that you would like to ask me? That you would like to ask me? All righty. So let me ask you one more time. Everything that we've done today, everything that I've asked you, preparation. If you can do everything we've gone through today, I've not asked you to do anything at all to do with your education, your experience, your qualification, or your suitability. But if you do all the things we've gone through today, do the preparation. It's your friend. Embrace preparation. You can do this. All right, so the interview's done. The interview's done. This is not where we stop, though. You might walk out and go, fantastic. You know what? That was the best interview. Oh, gee, that guy Jones from the Candidate Coach, he's amazing, man. I followed what he did and it really, really helped. I hope that's going to be the case. But don't think the hard work is done now. Don't think, think the hard work is done. There's just a couple of little things that you can do because you might walk out of that room and you might have done a great job. But the company interviewed six people and three of them did a great job. You were one of the three. So... They're like, oh, we've got these three people. You're one of them. How are we going to differentiate between the, the three of them now? So a couple of things to do post-interview. Send a thank you email within 24 hours. I absolutely love it when I interview someone on a Thursday morning. And Thursday afternoon or maybe Thursday night, I get an email. Hi, James. It was great to meet you at the interview yesterday. Thanks for taking the time to meet with me. Um, as I said, I'm really excited about this opportunity and I look forward to hearing back from you. That is all it needs to say. What that shows to me is this person is a good communicator and they have good manners. And guess what? My opinion of this person just went up another notch. And if we've got three candidates who are all very, very neck and neck, it's, they're all the same, sending an email like that just to say thank you, that could be the one single thing, and I know it sounds silly, that could be the difference to get you over the line. 
That one email could be the difference. Do it, do it, do it. Every interview you have. If you've been asked to send something through, do it immediately. So if, if at the end of the interview they say, hey, we're going to send you an assessment to do, um, or could you send me a copy of that academic transcript, uh, or could you send us that other that portfolio you were talking about, do it straight away. Don't go home, make a cup of tea, watch Netflix for an hour. No, 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 do it straight away. Show that you are super responsive. Show that if you're in the workplace and you were asked to do something, this is how I would respond. I would do it straight away. If the recruiter has to chase you for that information, your application or your chances have gone down. That have gone down. So be proactive. Get on the front foot here. If a timeline for communication hasn't been established, so at the end of the interview, you can ask, what are the next steps? When would I be likely to hear back? If they say, you'll hear back in one week, wait for one week. But it's okay to call the recruiter if they haven't said, sort of after three or four days. Hey, just calling to see if there's any feedback. You know, today's Thursday. If you had an interview on Monday, nothing wrong with giving them a call tomorrow. Hey, just thought I'd see if there's any update on my interview from Monday. Uh, and overall, being pilot responsive, polite, professional, and positive at all times. So, you know, a lot of candidates have great experience, but they can be a bit negative or a bit downtrodden in the interview process. They might bag out their last employer. Um, or they might be, oh, do I really, do, you, oh, do, I, do I have to send that through by the end of today? You are on show the whole time. So be responsive, positive, and polite at all times. Uh, and it will increase your chances. So again, preparation is your key, is the key. Preparation is your friend and preparation you can do. So if you are still wanting more assistance, I've got some great news for you. Where you are watching this video today on the Candidate Coaching platform, we have 12 episodes. There's 12 coaching videos and you can hear from seven different recruiters. Two of those episodes are on interview. Two of those are on interviews. The other episodes are on how to create a great elevator pitch, how to create great resumes, cover letters, how to negotiate salaries if you want to negotiate, the whole recruitment process, video interview. We've got a whole section there. Um, probably the key things for me to tell you today with video interviewing is there's really three or four main points. So the first main point I will have for you is camera level. Um, you can see I'm speaking to a webcam now, I've positioned it at eye height. Or if I had my phone, you would wanna position the phone at eye height. A lot of mistakes that people make is they put the camera down really low and then it looks like you're looking at my nose. So camera at eye height, is the most important thing and look the camera in the eye. Pretend that camera is an actual real person and talk to the camera. That's what a newsreader does and that's why it feels like a newsreader is reading to you. And when I'm looking right now, I'm looking down the camera and hopefully it feels like I'm looking at you. So camera at eye level. Tip number two, you need to have the light shining on your face but have no light behind you. So if you've got a window behind you, all you see is glare. If you've got the light shining on your face, like I have now, I've got a light on a tripod. Um, hopefully you can see me nice and clearly. So camera at eye height, light shining on your face. And the third thing is audio, be in a nice quiet space, nice quiet space um, so that the person can hear you clearly. And the fourth tip is show some personality. Don't forget to smile, you can laugh. Sometimes it can be really hard because some of the video interviews are literally you recording yourself and it might say, you have two minutes to answer the question on the screen, but still talk with your hands, show some personality because that's going to really stand out. You know, when it comes to communication, people remember how you said something a lot more than actually what words you use. But we have a video there on the Candidate Coach site, um, how to prepare for a video interview. It's actually episode, it's the final episode um, in the coaching video. So if you go down to the bottom, you can watch a video there on how to prepare for a video interview. We've also got our resume and cover letter templates that you can download and fill in yourself. We've got interview questions that you can take. Uh, we've got practice online tests, so you can test your own skills uh, and get, um, a, get a, a copy of your results instantly. Just jumping into the chat now, somebody has asked what to expect from me in group interviews. So the only difference from everything I've spoken about with group interviews is it's also important to interact with the other members. So if you've been invited in for a group interview, it's normally for a job where personality is really important. So talk to the other people in the interview room. 
Talk to the other candidates. If you're asked to do a group activity together, engage with them. Even if you are just sitting there simply waiting for the interview to start, don't just sit there really silently because you're, you're potentially being observed already. Interacting with the other people in the room is a really important part of a group interview. Back on the candidate coach, we've also got checklists that you can download to make sure you're prepared. We've got articles that you can download. We've got advice for executive job seekers, specific resources for executive job seekers. And we've got more upcoming live workshops and all of this is provided to you for free. The next workshop we're doing, I'm actually going on leave for two weeks. We normally do them every week, but in, in July the 20th, so July the 20th and then July the 22nd, we're doing a resume and cover letter week. So come back to where you're watching it now on Tuesday the 20th of July and Thursday the 22nd of July and you can watch more uh, live workshops. Um, but before we finish today, uh, I would love to, whoops, how do we go back? I would love to ask you to complete the short survey for me. Uh, I'm going to pop this into the chat function now. This really helps me in preparing the material. Um, it only takes two minutes and it basically, it's an uh, anonymous survey. I would love to hear from you um, what your feedback is on today's session, what you got from it, and also what can I, what can we run workshops on in the future? So while I leave that up there, I am going to hope that you click on it and I'm just going to scroll back up because it looks like we might have had a couple of extra questions that have come through. All right, great question here. How do you get feedback from an interview that you film yourself online and submit? That is a great question. That is a really good question. I've never been asked that question before. So if you've done a video interview and you submit it and it's gone through a system, it might be actually really hard to get that feedback. Um, if there's follow-up contact details, I will follow them up. I would call. Um, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong if there are no contact details of calling reception of the company and just being polite and saying, hey, I've done a video interview last week. Is there any chance that I can have some feedback? On that, another great thing to do with video interviews is just to practice. You know, if you're worried about how you're going to present or you're not sure, just practice. Just get your iPhone out like I'm doing now and just turn the camera on and just go to video and just video yourself. You know, just video yourself, um, move the camera around a bit, position it till you're really comfortable with it um, so that you know what you're going to look like. But sometimes it is hard to get feedback on video interviews, particularly if you're just recording answers, but there's no harm in trying. Someone's written here, interview video questions are quite a different experience. So if you relax and answer calmly and yourself and your personality will shine through, great answer. If you make a mistake and fumble over your words, that's okay. And you are, whoever wrote this comment is 100% correct. Um, if you make a mistake or you say the wrong thing, just have a little laugh and say, sorry, let me rephrase that for you. There's absolutely nothing wrong with rephrasing the answer. All right, if you've got any other questions that you would like to ask, now is the time to pop them in. I'll hang on the line for another minute just to see if any other questions come through. But please do click that survey link. Um, we are providing this workshop to you free through the platform you are watching it on. Um, and the one thing that really does help us is to get that feedback. Someone's asked in the chat, what if the recruiter you have been dealing with doesn't answer your phone messages or email? What should you do? Okay, great question. Get this question all the time. If you, want, if you are trying to get onto a recruiter, this is what I say, and I say this whether you are trying to find out about feedback, whether you are trying to find out about whether you should apply, whether you're trying to find out about anything, is what I would do is I would get my phone and I would call and I would leave a voicemail today. Hi, it's James, just calling about the interview on Friday. I'd love some feedback. Um, if you haven't heard back in a day or two, I would then call again. But this time I wouldn't leave a voicemail. Um, and maybe I would start calling every two hours, particularly if it's to a landline, but not leave a voicemail. Um, the reason I would continue to call is you actually want to just get that person when they're sitting at their desk. Um, you want to get them when... They're down at their computer and so they literally pick up the phone when you've been calling. Don't leave a voicemail every time you've called because you don't want to come across as a stalker. Um, you can follow up with a couple more emails. You know, I, I understand that there's a lot of frustration because you have, you, you know, you really want some feedback in, in terms of, you know, how did I go? What are the next steps? Am I, am I in or am I out for this role? Um, 
but you also don't want to come across as hassling the recruiter too much. So go about it that way. Leave one message, but just keep following up in the because then if you might have called eight times, they get you they pick up on the eighth call, but prior to that, they've only received one voicemail from you. All right. So any other questions? Let me have a look at the chat function here. Great workshop. Thank you for the workshop. Thanks for the workshop. Excellent. All right. Last minute then. If you've got any other questions, please let me know. Otherwise, we'll end the workshop. But be back here. Tell your friends. Share the link. I'll pop it back up on the screen now. Uh, Thursday, Tuesday the 20th. So pretty much after my annual leave, uh, Tuesday the, and Thursdays are going to be the days where we will most Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're going to be running workshops. So apart from doing resumes and cover letters in a couple of weeks, we'll then be doing um, LinkedIn profile. Uh, we'll be doing personal branding. Uh, we'll talk, do a workshop on how to resign and stay friends, salary negotiations, um, how to find jobs in a competitive market. So workshops uh, run regularly through this platform. Thank you for your comment there. Any from Bendigo, I hope you have a great day. I hope Everybody has enjoyed the session today. Um, I will sign off for now. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day uh, and all the best to you for the rest of the financial year, which is only one day old. New day, new beginning. Good luck with your job hunting. I'm the Candidate Coach. Bye-bye for now.